Hi there, Colin Scott Thompson here. In this video I'd like to discuss emergency procedures and try and encourage you to deliberately practice to get your procedures spotless. Being a human, there's a chance you're going to make some errors along the way. If you deliberately practice and try and achieve 100% performance up in the sky when you're not operating at 100% and you only get 75%, it's still a pass. If you adopt a blasé procedure strategy, these handles might not be that much use to you if you don't use them in the correct sequence or you don't understand the system. What follows are some videos of people who are picking up their equipment or dropping off their equipment before or after a reserve repack. And uh, we get the opportunity to uncover some poor skills due to human factors, complacency, arrogance, insufficient training, poor education, or I really feel some of the time if uh, Something scares us, we prefer not to think about it too long. Let's not dwell on the fact. If there's a monster on TV, you can cover your eyes and it's not going to hurt you anymore. If you don't see it, it's not going to hurt. When you jump out of an airplane with a parachute on your back and you have a problem, you might need to pull these handles. If you do it in an incorrect sequence, it could be inconvenient for you. So the object of this uh, video is to encourage you to not make mistakes and you achieve that by proper rehearsal, deliberate practice. Let's have a look and see what other people have been doing, other humans like you and I. So whether you're a fashion victim and have two identical soft pad handles or you've chosen the classic conventional soft breakaway handle and a metal ripcord. Contrary to what I originally thought, it seems empirically, at least in my workshop, we have the potential to fall into the trap just as easily. What handles do you use? If you're a fashion victim and have two identical handles, I don't believe you make your life any easier. If you have the classic handle set, it should be easier. At least that's what I thought. But when we watch these videos, you can see people have got both types and they appear to fall into the same trap just as easily. If you're not deliberately practicing and keeping your emergency procedures well polished, it doesn't really matter what equipment you have on your back when you leave the aircraft. It's not going to be much use to you if you don't operate it correctly. It's kind of the same as buying the safest car that exists on the road and then driving low off the edge of a mountaintop. You have to stay in control. The Dunning-Kruger effect is demonstrated here beautifully. People who lack knowledge and skills in particular areas suffer a double curse. First, they make mistakes and reach poor decisions. But second, those same knowledge gaps also prevent them from catching their errors. People lacking knowledge and skills in particular areas suffer a double curse. 
First, they make mistakes and reach poor decisions. But second, those same knowledge gaps also prevent them from catching their errors. In other words, poor performers lack the very experience needed to recognize just how badly they're doing. Whoa! <laughs> the cable is really long. What's this cable? Yeah. When somebody is unskilled, they can't see their own faults. When you're extremely competent, you can't perceive how unusual your abilities are. As instructors and educators, sometimes I feel we expect osmosis to handle. do the transfer of information for us. Handle. Reserve. No, no. It's another handle to pull. Pull the reserve. Pull the reserve. Ah. So if the Dunning-Kruger effect is invisible to those experiencing it, what can you do to find out how good you are? Ask for feedback from other people and give it some consideration even if it's hard to hear. Keep learning. The more knowledgeable you become, the less likely you are to have invisible holes in your competence. As Confucius put it, real knowledge Down. is knowing the extent of your ignorance. Having a smooth flow to your procedure Down. is yeah. important. During ground testing, when you pull the cutaway handle, the yellow cables don't have much resistance once you've got the Velcro peeled. And if that sets the stage for the force you expect on the reserve handle, it can surprise you sometimes. So be expecting 20 kilograms on each handle and you'll have a pleasant surprise when it's nowhere near there. The sound of the Velcro releasing can often distract people and they think the job is complete. Pull, 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 pull. You're not pulled yet. Pull the ripcord. Oh. Here we see the locking handle on the pilot sheet being incorrectly unlocked. What can we do to improve our performance? Get feedback, either from an experienced person, or my favorite thing is using a camera. Get that video instant feedback. You can often pick up your errors while viewing them from the outside, as it were, on the monitor. I would ask you please if you do happen to recognize any of the people in this video I'm not showing them to ridicule it's more as a wonderful opportunity to learn as Eleanor Roosevelt stated it's easier to learn from other people's mistakes you can't possibly live long enough to make all the mistakes yourself if you found this video useful please give the like button a tap. And if you thought this video was rubbish, please feel free to tap the dislike button twice.